In this lesson, we're starting a first-person view drone chassis design. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to create a sketch rectangle, create a sketch circle, apply an equal constraint, and convert a line to construction. To get started, we're going to be creating a new folder as well as a subfolder inside of our drone project. In your data panel, I'm going to create a folder called Machinist as well as Week 1. This is going to be the location for the file that we're going to create. To get started, we'll use an untitled document and we're going to create a single body, not a component, just a straight body, that is going to be a carbon fiber racing FPV or first person drone. So we're going to be using this as an example of how to create a parametric model, some various things that we can do, as well as create the water jet program for it. So to get started, we want to create a new sketch and we're going to be using the top plane. And we're going to start by first creating the section where we want to hold some of our components. Now, in the case of a water jetted or laser cut flat plate type of FPV frame, they generally have standoffs and multiple pieces, and they're very generic or very universal in terms of how components can be mounted. Lots of zip ties, slots for strapping components down, but in the very core of it, we're going to create a four hole set where we can have standoffs, we can place the power distribution board, and we can also place a flight controller. So we're going to start with the rectangle tool with a center point rectangle right at the origin, and we're going to drag it out. And we'll draw a second one, drag it out as well, and then hit escape on the keyboard. These are going to be squares, so I'm going to go ahead and make the lower and the rightmost line for both of these equal. So we'll have a large square. We'll right click and we'll have a small square. I'm going to press D on the keyboard and the larger one will be 36 millimeters by 36 and the smaller one will be 30.5 by 30.5. The smaller one is going to represent the whole pattern. So I'm going to press C on the keyboard and I'm going to place a hole at this location and I'm going to go around and place one at each corner point. Now as we start to create a lot of geometry, you'll notice that we start to get a lot of constraints popping up on the screen. What I like to do from time to time is simply turn off show constraints because anytime you select an entity, the constraints will come back and you'll get a preview of what those are. So anytime I need to see a constraint for something, I can click on that entity or I can always come back and show it as well. I'm gonna pre-select my constraint for equal. So we're gonna scroll down, select equals, and I'm going to place an equal constraint between all of the circles. I'm going to press escape, D on the keyboard again, and I'm going to put a three millimeter dimension here. We're going to be using three millimeter screws and we're going to keep the whole diameter small. That way we can run a small drill bit through if we need to increase it. But I like to make sure that it's going to be as accurate as possible. And sometimes tolerances with things like a water jet machine could be a little bit loose or a little bit tight, depending on the speed of the cut, the type of machine, the abrasives that are used, etc. So I'd rather keep the hole small. And if it gets a little bit big during the cutting process, that's okay. Because it is such a small hole, that's generally what happens is the entry and exit points will overlap and we'll tend to get a little bit of a wallow in that hole. So again, I want to keep those holes as tight as possible knowing that I might have to run a small drill bit through if I need to, to clear it out. So now that we have the basic core of the chassis where we're going to be able to bolt our FPV racing power distribution board and our CC3D flight controller, we're going to go ahead and expand out a little bit. We're going to zoom out and we're going to press L on the keyboard and we're going to draw a line from the origin. Just come up and to the right, click and then hit escape. This line is going to be construction, so I'm going to select it and press X on the keyboard. And then I'm going to select it. I'm going to control select one of these reference lines in here, right click, and I'm going to make them collinear. Because I know that the center is a square, I know that that line's at 45 degrees with either my vertical or my horizontal. So that way I can make sure that I have a true X pattern. I then want to press D on the keyboard and dimension this. So we're going to dimension this line and we're going to be making a 250 size quadcopter. So we're going to press 125 and that's going to be half of the distance from this motor to the one that's going to be in the back left corner. So now that we have this location, I'm going to press C again on the keyboard to create another circle. 
and we'll make this a 30 millimeter diameter, hit enter twice, and this is gonna be the location of one of our motors. We're gonna work off symmetry as much as possible. So we're gonna draw as little as we can. We're gonna simply focus on the front right corner. And once we have enough, we're gonna mirror it to the back, and then we're gonna mirror both of those over to the left-hand side. But at this point, we have the basic layout for the center, and we have the basic position for the motor. I'm gonna stop the sketch, I'm gonna expand my sketches folder. I wanna rename the sketch to be frame base shape hit enter. And I don't have any bodies yet. I haven't created any extrudes. I'm going to go back and modify the sketch, but I want to save my file. And the reason I want to do this is because we've already created some sketch entities. This first sketch is going to take us a little bit to get all of the geometry that we need. So we're going to save, make sure that we have a starting point we can always come back to. So we'll go ahead and save it inside of our machinist week one folder. And you can call this file whatever you like. I'm going to call it FPV racing chassis V1. I'm going to hit enter. And that way I have my starting point for the rest of my file. 